First on parity and writing the rule and getting it right, my, my request for that rule is that uh, treatment be covered by insurance, whether it's ordered by the court or whether it's, it's sought by the individual seeking treatment. Uh, many, many people who appear in front of me are not in the frame of mind they need to be in to, to make the decision whether or not to pursue treatment. And uh, my the AA people I know in Owatonna have always told me that uh, uh, the percentage of effective treatment doesn't change whether it's court ordered or whether it's voluntarily sought. So I think that's important language. The quest that drives me to, to get on the panel here tonight actually started with a, with a disabled veteran who appeared in front of me back in 2009. And uh, this particular individual appeared in front of me very ill, had lost approximately 85% plus of his hearing. Uh, service-connected PTSD, chemical dependency issues, first-degree felony DWI, um, violations of terms and conditions of probation after pleading guilty. And uh, he's here tonight. He has graciously and courageously volunteered to let me use his case as my example here tonight. And uh, he's not only been sober for quite some time, he's now working for Teen Challenge, working with a chemically dependent youth. I recognized that uh, Mr. Olson needed treatment, and he advised me at the hearings that he had treatment scheduled at the Veterans Administration, that they already pre-scheduled. So I ordered the Steele County Sheriff, and, and mind you, on a first-degree DWI, I'm mandated to send him to jail. That's not a choice for a judge to make. We don't have that attitude. So I'm sending Mr. Olson to jail. He tells me he's got appointments at the VA. So I say to the Steele County Sheriff, much to his chagrin, <laughs> I order you to take Mr. Olson to the hospital in Minneapolis so he can keep those awaited appointments. A uh, friend of mine, Dame Dan Finney, a former captain in the Otana Police Department, took uh, Mr. Olson up to the VA where they were met at the gate and not allowed into the facility because he was incarcerated. Incarcerated vet disabled veterans are not permitted to be cared for by the VA. So I'm requesting a little bit of a change in the statute. And I've submitted the, in my uh, written remarks for the record what, what specific statutes need to be changed. Um, I changed the rule so that incarcerated veterans, be it a county jail or a prison, be allowed the continuity of care to be treated by their physicians, psychiatrists, psychologists uh, at the Veterans Administration, have the Veterans Administration bill the county or the state the responsible governmental entity for the service provided by the VA, but give them that continuity of care, prevent the break in their records, prevent the local governments from having to reinvent the wheel in, in finding an audiologist or a neurologist and then start the testing over again so that these disabled veterans receive that continuity of care that they deserve from the service. <laughs>